All right, Nick, talk about Greg Urbis, head coach, San Edward, one of your mentors and someone you really look up to. Uh, he's a big part of my life uh, all through high school and, um, and even through college and going back here and there. Um, I used to work out there all the time afterwards when I was at Kent State or even when I was in the WWE if I was home. Uh, he's constantly there. He's constantly there for everybody. Uh, he's, he's a huge uh, mentor in my life uh, with wrestling and life going on to college and life after wrestling. Uh, he, he's there probably 23 or 24 hours a day at St. Edward, helping someone out, keeping the weight room open, running a camp, doing something to help someone out. Uh, he's awesome. I can't say enough good things about him. And uh, he's just, he's, uh, that, that school owes him a lot. Uh, he would never admit it, but he, he's done so much for that program, for St. Ed's at school in general, and just, just bringing a good name to everyone. All right. Another guy who coached you, uh, talk about how he really helped you get kind of a foot in the door with the WWE, uh, Coach Tadaki Hada. Uh, Coach Hada told me, uh, I, I told him I was very interested in wrestling. I was uh, in professional wrestling, probably my freshman year uh, at St. Edward, where he was coaching with us. I think he had just finished coaching on the women's Olympic team and kind of came back uh, to St. Ed's to help coach us. And uh, I kind of kept in his ear about always wanting to be a professional wrestler. And he, he said, do as well as you can in high school and college. And you know, maybe one day uh, I'll get to be able to you know, shake hands with, you know, with someone backstage or at least go to a show or something like that. And then one day that actually happened where uh, you know, we got some tickets left for us by Joe Briscoe, who uh, was for Oklahoma State, and uh, with Tadaki Hada. And it just got my foot in the door, got me a handshake with a few different people backstage. And they said, maybe one day we'll call you. And the next day, um, I was told I was coming out to Louisville for a five-day tryout at Ohio Valley Wrestling. And I actually went on my tryout uh, the next, uh, about a week later, with uh, Bobby Lashley. We went the same week for our tryouts. Uh, they, <laughs> they hired him. Um, a week afterwards, I was told I needed to get a lot bigger. So, uh, and they told me maybe six months later they had a, another open tryout that I would be invited to if I could put on some weight because I was about 170 pounds at the time. And uh, maybe a, two weeks before the open tryout, they uh, asked me to come back for a two-week tryout with a couple different people, which was uh, one was an XFL football player and one was uh, Big John Studd's uh, son. And we actually ended up having a tryout with uh, Lance Storm who had just taken over. Um, the training at Ohio Valley Wrestling and uh, I was told I picked everything up pretty fast, very professional about everything and uh, a couple weeks later I was offered a job with uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. Okay, Coach Hatter wrestled at Oklahoma State, uh, Briscoe, Oklahoma State guy. You would say Coach Hatter is definitely, I mean, he he's the guy, he's kind of got ends. He's our, he's our head women's coach for the Olympic team this year. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, I'm sure you probably didn't know that because you don't you follow WWE, but what would you say he helped you out with amateur wrestling wise? Oh, he was a huge. He he helps uh, not just me, our entire you know St. Ed's or whoever whoever he would coach off and on. Uh, he helped everybody out with like a different, I guess maybe like a, a different viewpoint on things and a different strategies here and there. You know, different techniques that he's learned from the past that a, a lot of other coaches. Uh, it's just a, a lot of. It, it's hard to explain. But just he sees things from different angles, different viewpoints, and it's very helpful. Okay. Uh, Nick, what do you think, obviously the, uh, the future holds, but how long do you see yourself projected being you know, involved with after maybe this? Do you see yourself maybe going back to amateur wrestling? Um, I don't see myself going back to amateur wrestling. Uh, I, I enjoy professional wrestling. It's my life. I love it. Uh, I know sometimes... Uh, you know, life changes things for you. You know, it might not be around for 20 years doing this. I, I'd be I'd be very happy with uh, maybe eight to ten more years here. Uh, possibly going out on my own, doing some different things. But I uh, I have a college education. I've actually taken a couple uh, courses towards my master's degree online. So I, I have a few plans in my back pocket. But uh, of course, I'd I'd love to do this as long as I wanted to and as long as I was healthy. Okay. What what is the uh, people will say? You know, he's gotten bigger. He must be on steroids. Okay, this is not not an easy question, but you know, talk about how stringent 
you know, they test you guys and make sure that you're not on controlled substances? Uh, we have, we've had a couple incidents in the past which have led to, uh, we used to have a, a drug testing policy that was always in place and it's become extremely strenuous uh, over the last maybe year or two. Uh, it's, we have the same company and facility, I believe, that tests uh, the NFL, Major League Baseball. It's a very, very in-depth test. We are constantly tested and it just, it, it, it's, it's beneficial for everyone, for the company that's a public traded company, for all the wrestlers, for their health and safety involved, and it's, uh, it, it's much better for everyone. It's, um, it, it's pretty intense, but it's, it, it's for the best for everybody. All right, Nick, thanks for the uh, inside scoop there, man. I appreciate it.